So, what is color grading? A lot of people believe it's just manipulating the red, green, and blue channels of your image, but honestly, it's much more than that. But let me clear a few things up. First, as you can tell by the youth in my voice, I am not a professional, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. So let's start with the basic premise of color grading. Color correction and color grading are two different things. Color correction is what is done to your image to make sure that it's at its correct exposure before the color grading process. You're balancing your image to make sure the whites are white and the blacks are black throughout your sequence. Now color grading is more of the artistic portion of it. You get to choose how your film is going to look through its colors. If your scene or film is in more of a romantic kind of setting, maybe you'll have warmer shadows and midtones, just like the movie Her. If you're making an epic superhero movie, Maybe you'll want to do Hollywood's famous teal and orange color schemes, as you would see in Man of Steel, Iron Man, Transformers a little bit. Almost any Hollywood epic has used the teal, bluish shadow, you know what I'm saying. All in all, color grading subconsciously helps the audience know how to feel during the scene. Yes, the actors, camera movement, directing, set design, sound, etc. all convey that, but the colors have a psychological impact on the human brain which tells them how to feel. Now let's go over cameras and why they're so damn expensive. People spend so much on cameras for many reasons. It's ergonomics, sensor size, recording mediums, I mean the list goes on. But most of it comes down to the format and codec it records to. Most DSLR cameras like the Rebel line of cameras, the Canon 5D cameras, those record to an H.264 codec, which is being wrapped around a QuickTime format. This means since it's not the highest quality codec, you'll start to introduce more noise, banding, and other compression artifacts in your footage once it's pushed too far in post. So how do you determine a high quality codec? A lot of it comes down to a few factors. The size of the compressed file, the speed of compression, the speed of decompression, and the look of the final image. You want a codec that can be compressed relatively fast while still keeping all of its quality and not, you know, killing your hard drives. Cameras that shoot major Hollywood pictures such as the Arri Alexa, that shoots in ProRes HQ4444, or Arri Raw leaving you, the colorist, a ton of room for color grading. So let's take a look at the before and after of Godzilla. Godzilla was filmed at the Arri Alexa in Arri Raw 2.8K source format, then printed to 35mm film, I believe. Before I move any further, you must know that QuickTime is a format and codecs are inside the format. This is called a wrapper. QuickTime is a wrapper for many codecs such as Avid's DNX HD or Apple ProRes LQ HQ. You can render to H.261, H.263, H.264, animation, so the list goes on. Now, what is bit depth? Bit depth essentially means how many colors you're capturing per channel. When you record video, you have a limited amount of colors you can mess with, and that is determined by your bit depth. Most DSLRs record to 8 bits per channel, which is 255 colors of red, 255 colors of green, and you named it, 255 colors of blue. Multiply that together and you get 16,581,375 colors in your image to mess with, known as millions of colors. The higher the bit depth, the more colors you have to pull from in grading. Another important factor in a camera is available dynamic range. The more available dynamic range your camera can capture, the more detail you can mess with in grading. With the Blackmagic Cinema Camera's 13 stops of in-camera dynamic range, you can expose for the highlights and shadows easier without having to worry about clipping or crushing your image. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, having 13 stops of dynamic range doesn't make your camera invincible to blowing out highlights you're still perfectly able to crush your highlights if you don't expose your video correctly. If you're shooting directly at a window, you will most likely blow out the window if you don't expose the camera correctly. Ultimately, you want the most dynamic range you can capture, even if your work is going straight to the web. This leads me to another popular question of, why would you want to spend so much money, so much time, on a nice image with a high bit depth, and also spend so much time on color grading if your work is going to be recompressed and go straight to the web? Well, many years ago, during the advent of color television, directors and filmmakers would shoot their commercials on film. And as we all know, film is way more expensive than tape. 
the film was scanned to one inch reel to reel tape at 500 lines of resolution, then broadcasted at 330 lines of resolution. So why spend so much money on shooting on film in the first place and not just shoot on a Betacam video camera? Because film has much more dynamic range than a Betacam. Therefore, all of that dynamic range would be compressed into an 8-bit image. The recompressed video will look a lot better than if it was originally recorded in 8-bit color space. Okay, so now let's go over different color grading software and how I use them in my own workflow. One of the most popular color grading softwares to date is Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. This software is a powerful color grading tool and will run you about $1,000 unless you purchase one of their cameras. I personally have not used it and won't talk much on it because I don't have CUDA acceleration on my computer to even run the program in the first place. Next up is Adobe SpeedGrade. This program is my main color grading solution for grading my BMCC film log footage out of Premiere Pro. I currently use this program for my grading because it works so fluidly with all of Adobe's products with their new Creative Cloud. I, I mean seriously. I can literally import my footage, edit it, do the VFX, send it back, mix and edit the sound, go to Adobe SpeedGrade, color grade the shot, and then dynamic link like a boss back to Premiere Pro and render the hell out of your footage while I eat a prime rib all at the same time. SpeedGrade is a great program for an all Adobe workflow. There's no need to conform your footage or export proxies or XMLs or anything you'd have to do for DaVinci Resolve. It's just, it's just really, really simple. Then there's Magic Bullet Looks, Magic Bullet Mojo, Apple Color, and of course, the infamous Windows Movie Maker. So now I'm gonna go into my workflow and how I color grade some of my projects. So let's jump into that right now.